Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. It's a blessing to be back with us in the house of the Lord once again to study the Word of God. Hope everyone had a blessed and safe weekend. Amen. Uh, on our prayer and, and uh, healing list today, I uh, ask you to hold Sister Virginia Arnold and Reverend Arnold up in a lot of prayer. Uh, Sister Virginia Arnold, she had a real bad fall. And uh, so she had to go to the hospital. So we want to hold her up in a lot of prayer, her and Reverend Arnold. Amen. I know, you know, we ask for prayer for them every week. And we ask every week because it's a necessary uh, request. So we ask you to continue to hold them up in a lot of prayer. As well, continue to hold up uh, Sister Jeannie Lane. I was rather, Sister Phyllis Lane, I'm sorry. Uh, continue to hold Sister Phyllis Lane up in, in a lot of prayer as well. As well as uh, Brother Charles Spann, continue to pray for him, hold him up uh, in a lot of prayer. And well as Sister Estella Wilson, continue to hold him up in a lot of prayer. Amen. Uh, as we always say, we just never know when it's going to be our turn, church. And uh, so we just want to continue to pray for them, as well as continue to pray for our Pastor Hill. And uh, continue to pray for our church, our church family, and the officers of our church as well. Amen? Okay. If you don't mind, if you bow your head with us in a word of prayer. Amen? Our Father and our God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, Father, we thank you for the wonderful privilege to come once again into your holy presence to praise you and to worship you because you are truly worthy to be praised, because you are a great God and you are greatly to be praised. You have given us your grace and your mercy and all of our provisions in times of desperate need. You are that special person, Father, that God has showered his love upon and used to express his love to the world and by letting you down that cross for us. And we just want to thank you today. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask your continued blessings upon those who are on our prayer and our healing this Father. We know, dear Lord, that you said in your word, Father, if you call upon me, I would answer you, and I'll show you great mighty things that you don't know. So we call upon you right now, Father, asking for you to bless them in a special way. Touch them right now with your healing, love, and power. It's only you can. We ask your blessings upon our country. We ask your blessings upon every need, dear Lord. So bless now as only you can. And we're just so careful to give you all the praise and the glory. Just we pray, Father, in your name and for your sake. Amen. Okay, church, let us get after our lesson. If you will, we're going to pick back up to where we kind of left off last week. And uh, so let us look at a few of these here statements uh, that Jesus made on different occasions dealing with forgiveness and offense. Amen. So if you will, turn with me into your Bibles. Go with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter. And, oh, by the way, last week, uh, I was reading from a particular passage of scripture and I, I gave you one uh, book and I was reading from another book and I want to apologize for that. I am so very sorry. I was looking at Mark 11, uh, 24 to 25, but I gave you Matthew. So I just wanted to make that correction for you today and I apologize for that. I hope no one was misled by that. And so uh, please forgive me. Amen. We'll try and not. Uh, do that again. Amen. So if you will, I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 6 and verses 14 through 15. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 through 15. And we're going to be reading from the New King James uh, translation of our Bibles. Amen. You ready? Let us read. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen. Now let us look 
at Luke. Okay, let's look at Luke. Chapter 6, verse 37. Again, he says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Now let us keep in mind uh, what the subject of our, our lesson is all about. We're looking at our lesson is a solid foundation or a sure foundation. Amen. And when we stand on that sure foundation of God, amen, we will not be so quick to not want to forgive God. So I want you to please pay close attention to us and follow along close with us in our lesson today. Amen. Now, again, he talks about forgiveness again in the Lord's Prayer. We read here in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 12 where he says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. Now, I wonder how many Christians would want God to forgive them in the same way they have forgiven those who have offended them. Amen. Yet this is exactly the way in which they will be forgiven. That's exactly the way. The same way that you want to forgive people, that's exactly the same way you'll be forgiven. Amen? Because unforgiveness is so rampant in our churches. Amen? We do not want to talk. Uh, rather, we do not want to take the words of Jesus so seriously. But rampant or not, church, truth does not change. It does not change. Everything else changes, but the truth of God's word, it does not change. You see, the way we forgive, release, and restore others is the way we will be forgiven. You see? Now, let us look at here uh, how what God says about this unforgiving servant. Okay? Here in Matthew, Matthew chapter 18. Okay? So turn here, Matthew chapter 18. Jesus sheds in 21, Matthew 18, 21. Jesus sheds further light here on the bondage of unforgiveness and offense. And, and let me say this, that's what unforgiveness is. An offense is, it's bondage. It holds you in bondage. Amen, not the person that you hold unforgiveness from. It holds you in bondage. So he says, Rather, he, he was teaching the disciples here how to be reconciled with a brother who had offended them. Now, uh, we will discuss uh, reconciliation a little later on uh, over in our studies. We're not going to deal with that right at the moment. Amen. But here in Matthew chapter 18 and verses 21, Peter asks, he says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times well you see Peter thought he was being generous you see Peter he liked to take things to the extreme amen now remember he was one of the ones who said let's build three tabernacles for you one for Jesus one for Moses and one for Elisha Amen. They're on the mountain of transfiguration. Now, if you're following along with me, that's here in Matthew chapter 17 and verses 4. Okay? If you're following along with me, I pray that you are. Now, he thought he was being magnanimous. Peter was. When he said, well, how many times shall I forgive? Seven times. He thought he was being magnanimous. He said, I'll impress the master with my willingness to forgive them seven times. But he received a very shocking reply from Jesus. Jesus blew away what Peter considered to be generous. He just blew it right out of the water. Amen. He said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. That's right there in, in this 21st and 21st verse of our text here in Matthew chapter 18. Amen. In other words, in other words, you see, he says, forgive as Jesus does. 
and that is without limits. Amen. And I know that's shocking to some people, but him as he does, without limits. You see, so so here, then then here in uh, verses 23 and 24, amen. Now this is all Jesus talking here. This is all Jesus in red letters. If you, if you get, if you're looking at your Bible, this is Jesus talking. Jesus told a parable. He told a parable, right, verse 23 and 24, to emphasize his point. Now look what he said there in that 21st, I'm at 23rd verse in verse 24. It's Matthew 18. Look what he said. He says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, to understand the enormity of what Jesus was saying here, we must know what a talent was. Amen? In order to understand it, we must know what a talent was. Well, a talent was a unit of measure. Amen? It was used to measure gold as well as silver. Amen? And, and, and I want you, I want to show you what I'm talking about here. I want you to turn to 2 Samuel. 2 chapter Samuel, and we want to look at chapter 12 and verses 30. Amen? We're looking at now what a measure of talent is, what a talent is. So 2 Samuel 12 and 30 is going to tell us. Look at what it says. Okay? And also, again, I'm still reading from the New King James translation. It says, Then he took their king's crown from his head. Its weight was a talent of gold with precious stones. And it was set on David's head. Also, he brought out the spoil of the city in great abundance. Amen? Now, if you will, just flip over for me and let us go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings, and we want to look at chapter 20 and verses 39. That's 1 Kings, chapter 20 and verse 39. Amen? Are you there? Let us read. Now as the king passed by, he cried out to the king and said, Your servant went out into the midst of the battle, and there a man came over and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man. If by any means he is missing, your life shall be for his life or else you shall pay a talent of silver. Amen? Now this also, it can consist of other uh, metals and commodities as well. Not just, doesn't just consist of, of silver and gold and so forth. Amen? So in this parable, it represents a debt. Please listen carefully. It represents a debt. So we can safely say in assuming he was referring to a unit of exchange such as gold or silver. Okay? Now, let's just say he, say he was talking about gold. Now, the common talent was equivalent to approximately 75 pounds. Now, it was the full weight that a man could carry. That's what it was. It was the full weight of a man could carry. Amen? You see? So, uh, here in 2 Kings, 2 Kings, now look at 2 Kings, chapter 5, and verse 23. Look what he says. So Naaman said, please take two talents. And he urged him and bound him two talents of silver 
in two bags with two charges, rather two changes of clothes, and handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. Now, 10,000 talents would be approximately 750,000 pounds or 275 tons. Amen. Please listen carefully. We're we going to mathematic this thing. So, so this servant owed the king 275 tons of gold. Can you imagine that? 275 tons of gold he owed him. So at the present time, the price of gold is already $375 an ounce. So in today's market, a talent of gold would be worth $450,000. Therefore, 10,000 talents of gold is worth $4.5 billion. That's billion would it be, amen, that this servant owed his king. Amen, $4.5 billion. In other words, what was happening here, you see, Jesus was emphasizing here that this servant owed a debt that he could never, never pay. Amen. He owed a debt that he could never pay. So, so, so let us let us read on. Look here in Matthew eighteen. Let us read on, verse twenty-five through twenty-seven. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. That's a lot of debt to forgive. Amen? Okay, now let's look at how this parable applies to being offended. Okay, let's look at how this parable here applies to being offended. You see, when an offense occurs, amen, then a debt is owed. Okay, a debt is owed. You see, we have all heard it said, amen, we've all heard it said, he'll pay for this, or she's going to pay for this. We've all heard that, that saying. Amen. So, so forgiveness is like the cancellation of a debt. Amen. The king represents God the Father who forgave this servant a debt that was impossible. Impossible for him to pay. Okay. Now, please listen. In Colossians, Chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Turn there with me just a moment. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And look what we find here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Are you there? Okay. Let us read. He says, And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of certificate of debt with its requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Amen having nailed it to the cross. In other words, the debt were forgiven us was unpayable. Amen? The debt were forgiven us was unpayable.
hell. There was no way we could ever repay God what we owe. Amen. We could never repay him for what we owe. Amen. Our offense was overwhelmed. So God, he gave salvation as a gift. Praise the Lord. Jesus paid the certificate of debt that was against us. Amen. So, so we can see the parallel between this servant's relationship to his king and our relationship with God. Are y'all following? Amen. Let, let us continue to read. Look, look what it says here in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 28 tells us. Look what it tells us. It says, Matthew 18 and verse 28, it tells us. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Amen. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe. Pay me what you owe. You see, now listen. A denarius was approximately equivalent or equal to a laborer's daily wages. So, at today's wages, 100 denarii would be worth about $4,000. Amen? About $4,000. All right. Let, 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 us keep, let us keep bringing this into perspective. Let us continue to read. Continue to read. Look here. Verses 29 through 30. Still in this 18th chapter of Matthew. Now verse 29 through 30. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Amen. Till he should pay the debt. You talk about hypocrisy. Amen. One of his fellow servants, amen, owed him a sizable sum of money. One third of a year's wages. Okay. How would you like it if you were missing a third of your salary, how would you like that people missing a third of your every week when you got paid or every month or however you get paid? And you get your pay and you was a third short. Amen. But remember that this man was forgiven a debt of $4.5 billion. He was forgiven that debt. That's more money than he could earn in a lifetime. That was more money than he could earn in four or five lifetimes. Amen? You see, in, a, in other words, what I'm saying to a church, the offense we hold against each other compared to our offense against God are like $4,000 compared to $4.5 billion. Amen. Now we may have been treated badly by someone else. Amen. I think maybe, you know, maybe some of us have been treated badly by someone else. But it does not compare with our transgressions against God. It, it, it's not a comparison. There. Amen. Now, now you may feel no one has it as bad as you do. Amen. Sometimes we think. We have it better than everyone else until we see somebody else's problem. Amen. But you don't realize how bad Jesus was treated. He was innocent. He was innocent and was treated horribly. Amen. He was a blameless lamb that was slain. Amen. He was a blameless lamb that was slain. Amen. Surrounded by armed guards, Jesus was dragged from the Garden of Gethsemane, where he had been arrested, amen, to the house of the high priest, whose name is Caiaphas, amen. 
There he would spend all night long undergoing an exhausting trial. You see, it was un you see, it was unusual to hold a trial at night back then. Why? Because but 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 Kai Avis, he wanted to complete the proceedings before the people rebelled upon learning of Jesus' arrest. So Kai Avis, he knew that many people admired Jesus as a wise teacher. But he and others considered Jesus a troublemaker who just wouldn't go away. Amen. He just wouldn't go away. So they wanted him dead. So Caiaphas had quietly convened the 700 member of priests and scribes known as the Sanhedrin Council of his house. Amen. All through the night, Jesus stood silent as witnesses came before the council and told lie after lies about what Jesus had said and done. But none of the witnesses testimony agreed. Amen? None of their testimonies agreed with each other. So the council was confused. Amen? You see, in other words, they didn't have their stuff together. Everybody was saying different things. So they had the council. Now they're all confused. So, so in exasperation, look what Caiaphas did. Caiaphas asked Jesus, he said, what had he to say about these charges? He said, what do you have to say? And when Jesus said nothing, Caiaphas demanded that I be put under, that he be put under oath before the living God. Look what he tells him here in Matthew chapter 26, and verse 23. He says, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Amen. Y'all see that there in Matthew 26 and verse 63. He said, Jesus, I am, Jesus replied. Now that's, a, that's there in Mark. He replied there in Mark. He said, I am, Mark chapter 14 and verse 62. Okay. Again, that's in Mark, now chapter 14 and 62. Outraged. They were outraged that anyone would claim to be God's son. Amen. Caiaphas, he appealed to the council. He said, why do we still need witnesses? You know, we don't need no more witnesses. You have now heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? What's your verdict? We don't heard all this blasphemy. What's the verdict? And the council answered, he deserved death. Amen. He deserved death. Here Jesus hadn't did a thing, hadn't committed no sin, hadn't committed no crime, but yet he deserved death. Right there, Matthew 26, verse 65 through 66, if you're paying attention. Amen. Then he struck and blindfolded Jesus, mocking him the entire time. Amen. At dawn, they took Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, who reluctantly re agreed to execute him that morning. Amen. Can you imagine that? He reluctant. They knew he had did anything. Nobody had proved that he had did anything. But they was offended because he said he was the son of God. Amen. You see, a person who cannot forgive has forgotten the great debt for which they were forgiven. Amen. And when we realize that Jesus delivered us from eternal death and torment, we will release others unconditionally. When we grasp that and get it in our hearts, then we will gladly release and forgive others. Amen. Now we'll talk about how to walk through all of this later on in our study. Amen. So please stay with me. Now, I can't imagine 
nothing worse than eternity in a lake of fire. Can you? I can't imagine anything worse than that. There is no relief. The worm does not die. Amen? And the fire is not quenched. That was our destination until God forgave us through the death of his son, Jesus Christ. That was our destination. Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. Amen? If you have heard, if you have had a hard time forgiving, just think of the reality of hell and the love of God that saved us from it. Just think about that. If you have a hard time forgiving, just think about that. Just put it in perspective and, and think about that. Amen? So this is a lesson for all believers, church. This is a lesson for all believers. How dare us to say we're going to hold something that's innocuous by not forgiving someone and say, well, you just don't know what they did to me. They lied on me. Or they did this to me. It doesn't matter what they did to you. Amen. God doesn't give you an out. He says, forgive. Period. Amen. Doesn't matter what they did to you. Let it go. Amen. Because you're not, as I told you earlier, you're not holding them in bondage. You're holding yourself in bondage. Amen. So don't hold yourself in bondage because they probably don't care whether you forgive them or not. Amen. Let's continue this parable. Let's continue looking at this parable. Here in Matthew chapter 18, verse 31 through 33. Amen. Matthew 18, 31 through 33. Let's continue looking at what it says. So, so when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? Amen. Now, just so we're clear, please listen here. Jesus was not referring here to unbelievers. Amen. He's not referring to unbelievers in this parable. This man already had a great debt forgiven him. He's talking about Christians. Amen. This man had already had a great debt forgiven him. Salvation. Amen? Salvation. And he was called the master's servant. Amen? The master's servant. The one he would not forgive was a fellow servant. So, so we can conclude that this is the faith of a believer. Amen? We can conclude this is the faith of a believer. You see? Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Amen? Okay. I'm still looking at this from, still we're looking at this from the New King James translation. Amen. So, who refused to forgive? Amen. This is the faith of a believer who refused to forgive. Praise God. Let us just keep reading. Let's read from Look at verse 34 and 35. The other in this 18th chapter. Verse 34 and 35. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if you, if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespass. Amen. If each of you, and listen to what he said, he put emphasis on it, from his heart, he didn't say from his head, he said from his heart, does not forgive his brother his trespasses. 
Amen. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Please listen to me. These verses have three major points. I'm not sure we're going to have time to get through all of them, but they have three major points. One, the forgiven servant is turned over to torture. Amen? Two, he has to pay off the original debt, 375 tons of gold. And thirdly, God the Father will do the same to any believer who does not forgive a brother's or sister's offense. Amen. He will do the same. As I said, one, the unforgiven servant is turned over to torture. Do we see that in verse 34? Verse 34, it's still in Matthew chapter 18, verse 34. Can be turned over to torture. Now, look what Webster's, I want to share with you what Webster's uh, dictionary, how it defines torture. Webster's dictionary defines torture as agony of body or mind or the infliction of intense pain to punish, coerce, or afford sadistic pleasure. Amen. That's how Webster de defines torture. Now, the instigators of this torture, look who the instigators are. The instigators of this torture are demon spirits. Amen. They are demon spirits. God gives the torturers permission to inflict pain and agony of body and mind at will, even if we are believers. He gives them permission to do it. There are people who will not receive healing, comfort, or deliverance, all because they will not release others and forgive them from their, from their hearts. Amen? Because they will not forgive them from their hearts. Listen, Medical doctors and scientists and so forth have linked unforgiveness and bitterness with certain diseases such as arthritis and cancer. Amen? And, and, and many, many uh, cases of mental uh, sicknesses are tied to bitter unforgiveness. Some people will never be healed because they just won't forgive. Forgiveness is usually denied to other people, but sometimes it is denied to oneself as well. Somebody said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, Jesus said, if you have anything against anyone, he said, forgive. Now, I want to underscore what he said. He said, if you have any unforgiveness of anyone, Amen. Anyone. Now, Matthew chapter 5. I'm not making this stuff up. Matthew chapter 5, 24 says, leave your gifts there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Amen. First things first. Go be Reconcile with your brother. Go and forgive him. And then come and leave your offer. Now, when he said, if you have anything against anyone, please listen to this very carefully. Well, anyone includes you. It means he's talking about you as well. You have, you have not forgiven yourself for something that God has forgiven you for. Amen. If God forgave you, who are you not to forgive one? He has forgiven, even if that one is you. Amen? You see? Now, secondly, 
unforg the unforgiven servant had to pay the original unpaid debt. Amen. He was required to do the impossible. He was required to do the impossible. It, it is like I was being required to pay the debt Jesus paid at Calvary. It's tantamount to that. We would lose our salvation. Amen. I said we would lose our salvation. Now church, now listen, I'm, I'm about out of time. But please come back and let us finish this next week. Amen. Please come back. Unforgiveness and offense is something that keeps our prayers from being answered. And if you are a Christian, and I pray that you are, and you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, the Bible tells us in Psalm 66 and 18, God said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, he will not hear your prayer. I don't know about you, but I have to get my prayers to you. I can't let somebody else who have offended me in any way preclude me from getting my prayers to you. Amen. And I ask God to search my heart if I have anything against anyone that I'm holding against, to illuminate that so I can get that off of me. I can't think of a soul that I hold anything against in any way whatsoever. Amen. I'm not going to let anyone hold that kind of power over me. Anyone causes me to not be able to get a prayer from you. I have to pray for my wife. I have to pray for my family. I have to pray for my church family. I have to pray for those who are sick. I can't do that effectively. If I'm holding up to the other. Amen. Okay, that's our lesson for today. But please come back next week and let us uh, finish unpacking. Amen. God bless you. And may you have a blessed week. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you once again for the privilege to come into your presence and study your word. Thanking you for all good and perfect gifts that come from you, Lord. So we ask you right now, Father, if there's anyone who is the sound of my voice or holding anything against anyone, we ask you, God, to forgive them and to move upon their spirit to release that individual. Because you said in your word, as we just quoted from Psalm 66, 18, you regard iniquity in your heart. He said you will not hear our prayer. Amen. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, Father. For every spiritual blessing that you have blessed us with in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Blessing us only. We pray in your name, Father, for your sake. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you. Have a blessed week. And I'll see you right back here next week.